Okay, so doing incomplete dominance problems, they're different. We aren't going to do all of these. I'm repeating myself for the recording just so you guys know. Uh, where two R's are going to equal red flowers, two W's, white flowers, and if they're heterozygous or hybrid, you'll get pink flowers. We're not going to do all the problems. We'll pick a few out. The first one says red flowers. In that case, we know the genotype. In this case, with incomplete dominance, you guys, if you know the genotype or the phenotype, you do know the genotype. So the other one is going to be heterozygous for pink. And so when I do a cross, we understand that this parent over here can only give a little r or an r. This parent here can give an r or a w. So when they make their zygotes, we understand that 50-50 as far as their percentage, because I did ask for percentage. No, I asked for ratio, sorry. Or ratio, I spelled it wrong. We understand that this is a one-to-one -one genotypic ratio and an also a one-to-one -one phenotypic ratio. So it's for both phenotype and genotype. The ratio will be the same. Do you guys understand that? An incomplete dominance is one of those situations where the genotype and the phenotype will be the same because every new genotype gives you a different phenotype. I want you guys to do C. Cross a red and a white flower. Please do that real quick. Step one, set up the cross. Step two, put it in a monohybrid. This should be real easy. Yeah, we're going to do dihybrids today, too. So hopefully you guys have all kind of started here and said, all right. Right? Something like that. give you a hint. It's pretty easy. Where one parent can only give an R, the other parent a W, and in this case, all offspring will be pink. What I do want you guys to do, this would be incomplete dominance, right? Especially right here, this because this shows pink, right? That's 100% or just one for a ratio. Okay. Yeah. Please cross a pink with a pink now. Do the next one. Pink with a pink. Step one, set up a cross. So a pink with a pink. So knowing that both parents are heterozygous, you guys know what to do. The Punnett square doesn't change, whether it's incomplete or complete dominance or codominance. You would still have to set it up the same way. It's just your results are different. So in this example, you do need all four squares. The first parent. Yeah, 25, 50, 25 for the phenotype and genotype. Yeah, we'll show you why. This parent can give an R or a W. This parent can give an R or a W. And when they come together, this one's going to be red, right? This one's going to be pink. And this bottom one will be white. So I have the 1 to 2 to 1. Oops, if I could get my pen to work. 1 to 2 to 1, both genotypic and phenotypic ratio are the same. Okay? So I still have the 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. 1 red to two pink, to one white. Yes? S is just means it's that gene. It doesn't matter. Sometimes when you have incomplete situations, you have to have a separate letter 
so you can have a different letter for that same gene. S just tells me we're on the same gene, okay? I believe these are snapdragon flowers that I was talking about, if I remember correctly, so S would be the snapdragon flower. Yep. Right there. All right, so we get that. Now we need to take a look at a few things we did yesterday. We talked about blood type yesterday, so I'm going to see what you learned. I would like you to cross an individual that has AB with a woman that has O, and I want you to tell me the genotypes of their offspring, possible genotypes. Cross an AB man with an O woman. Nope, not in this case. Blood type is not sex linked. Step one, set up a cross. Ladies, let's go. AB with an O. Step one is to set up a cross. Percentage. AB crossed with an O. In this case, did I know the, the genotype when, when I told you the phenotype of both of these? Everybody say codominance. Codominance, just like incomplete dominance, you will know the genotype from the phenotype because they'll both be expressed, right? Why did I know the genotype from type O? Because O is recessive, okay? So when we put these in a cross, just so you guys know, you're going to end up with something like that. Hopefully this is where you're at. I, I will assign you your own problems individually if you are not able to show me that you followed along at the end of this. Just warning you all. So if you're ignoring and not writing everything down that we do together, you get cracking, Jack. This parent will give what? An A or a? This parent will only give us. So the zygotes are either going to have AO or BO. Bad kid, you don't want the you don't want the BO genotype. You could be positive about it, though. So is this 50-50? Yeah. OK. 50% will be A, 50% will be B, both heterozygous, carrying the recessive O trait. So read number two. It says, could a mother with type B blood and a father with type O blood produce offspring with AB? I hear a lot of no's. Why not? Yeah. Why? What does that matter? A is not present anywhere in that problem, is it? So you cannot get type AB blood unless there's an A allele involved. Okay? That's what you would tell me. All right, I think you guys are good with blood type. I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Blood type is an example of both multiple alleles, co-dominance, and complete dominance showing also heterozygosity at the same time. The only thing blood can't show us is incomplete dominance. Okay. When you have more than two alleles, like A, B, and O, there's three there. If I just had A and B, that would not be multiple alleles. Okay. So I am going to give you a simple situation to start off with with dihybrids. Everybody needs to grab their brain and focus up here. Okay. This is not easy stuff. The first one says, in summer squash, white color is dominant over yellow color. Well, that's easy. That's a complete dominant situation, right? Except I'm going to give you a different trait at the same time. Disc-shaped is going to be dominant over sphere-shaped. So if there was a total of four Punnett squares, how many are there in these problems? Maybe. It's exponential. 
16. Okay. The first one, not so much, though. First one says, white homozygous disc shaped. Well, that's easy, right? Both parents are going to be homozygous. I have to tell you homozygous because it's the dominant phenotype. So there's the first parent for those two traits. Step one, set up a cross. And then the next one is yellow sphered. Is yellow and sphered both the recessive trait? Yeah, so they're homozygous recessive. Please stop making that noise, whatever, whoever's doing that. Okay. So both parents are always going to give the same thing. This one will always give a big, big. This one will always give a little, little. Well, in that case, I only need two squares, right? Big, big, little, little. And all children will be, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Rewrote the dang parent genotype there. Okay. Everybody on the same page here? That's simple, right? If we have two pure generations for both traits. Think it's always that easy? <laughs> Let's go straight to the hardest it could be. Let's go like from the easiest straight to the worst. Let me get that out of the way. Okay. We can like baby or step our way into it. There's no point. Just let's do it. What if I told you that both parents are heterozygous for both traits that I just talked about? Then we have a different situation. If I'm looking at just a monohybrid cross where I have one character I'm looking at, that's four squares, no big deal. But when they're heterozygous for both traits, now I need 16 stinking squares, right? Okay. What? No, here, I'll show you. Um, hold on. You will in a moment. You don't get it until you do it with me. These are all, these parents up above that you're looking at are heterozygous for both the color and the shape. I'll show you. I'll show you. Don't stress out. It's almost spring break. So when you set this up, how did I know I needed 16? Let me show you. This parent can give, everybody do this with me at the same time. This parent can give a big D and a big D. It could also give a, I'm sorry, big W and a big D. It could also give a big W and a little d, right? It could give a little big, or it could give a little little. Same thing for the other one. This parent could give a big big, could give a big little. I didn't say homo, I said hetero little big, both parents are heterozygous for both traits. Little, little. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. You're okay. It's not easy. So, not really, no. But they can only give half of themselves, right? So we have to choose the options. They have four different versions of themselves they can give. Yes? What if I asked you, what is the probability of you having blue eyes and long hair? Oh. No, because it wouldn't be compounded. It would just, then you'd have eight squares. And there are 16 different combinations I can make. It's a matrice. It's exponential. So as soon as you compound things, it becomes an exponential matrix, which is what you're looking at here, not two separate Punnett squares. We're saying, what if they, how are they going to happen together, not separate? It's not two different monohybrids. It's a new thing called a dihybrid. Do you get it? Yeah. So 
What's four times four? 16. So the Punnett square compounded exponentially. Okay. So if one trait is four squares, two traits and how they might happen together if they're heterozygous become 16. It'll make sense when we put them together. So let's bring them together now. Big W, big W, big D, big D. Big W, big W, big W, little d. Big W, little W, big D, big D. I am telling you, do it the way I'm doing it, or it gets confusing. You know how I set this up like, a mate, like I brought them the same way. It was very systematic how I did that. That'll make sense in a minute. Big W, little W, big D, big D. Big W, big W, big D, little d. Big W, big W, little d, little d. Big W, little W, big D, little d. Big W, little W, little d, little d. Big W, little W, big D, big D. Big W, little W, big D, little d. Little W, little W, big D, big D. Little w, little w, big D, little d. You guys understand why I make the lines over my little ones now? Yeah. Big w, little w, big D, little d. Big w, little w, little little, little d, little d. Uh, little w, little w, big d, little d. And little, 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 little. Oh, okay. So there is your... Dihybrid cross for both parents are heterozygous for both traits. Blah, right? Yeah. Now, you can do a trihybrid cross. That's 64 squares. What? I won't do that to you. What? White disc are the dominant. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then yellow sphere is the recessives. So here's the thing, guys. We need to find out what the different genotypes are here so we can talk about them. Oh, boy. So if I have you write all the different combinations, I'm going to have eight total, right? Different types of genotypes. First one is what? Dominant, 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 uh, dominant, sorry. The next one is dominant, 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 recessive. Another one I could have is dominant, recessive, dominant, dominant. Actually, let's do all the ones that are, no, that's right, dominant, recessive, dominant, dominant, recessive, recessive, dominant, dominant. Okay? I could also have where they're both heterozygous. Okay? I could have dominant, recessive, little, little. And I could have little, little, dominant, recessive, and I could have all little. Oh, boy. So, what's the genotypic ratio of that, right? 1 to 3 to 3 to 3 to 3 to 2 to 1 or whatever. Don't worry about that. I'll never ask you that. Okay? But what I will ask you is the phenotypic ratio of both parents are heterozygous for the traits. I'm going to show you a little method here of how to do this. What we're going to do is talk about the different phenotypes. So the first one is if they're dominant for both. That's white. So white, oh my goodness, my pen's acting up today, can't tell. So white, still doing it, white disc would be one phenotype.
Sorry, guys. My. So white disc is the first one. Okay. I could also be white sphere. I could be yellow disc. Oops. And I could be yellow sphere, right? When it does that, I'm just going to go into cursive mode from now on. <laughs> so I don't curse, right? All right. So when I take a look here, we're going to do this fairly systematically. Let's look at white disk first. Let's, find, let's count how many are white disk. What's this one? White disk, right? What's this one? This one? This one? This one? All those? White discs? Okay. So there's no other white discs, are there? That's it. See, if you set them up like this, it falls into the matrices. It's kind of like foiling a little bit with genetics, if you think about it like that. You know what I mean? Now you don't think about the math too much behind that. Just know to set it up like this, and everything will work out hunky-dory. So we have how many white discs? Nine. Okay. Next one. White sphere. White sphere. What's this one? White sphere. Any more white spheres? Next one we're looking for is yellow disc. Right? Oh no, I didn't change my color. Why didn't I change my color? Sorry guys. It's my fault. Let me do that for you so you can tell. Okay? And then the last one. Only one. Yellow sphere. So the phenotypic ratio is kind of, it's not easy, but it's not as hard. It's 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 is the phenotypic ratio of a dihybrid cross. That's fun, isn't it? No? Do you want to do a trihybrid? No. <laughs> well, I just will tell you if you had a, a tri-hybrid, let's just let's just talk about how you would set it up, and then we'll decide whether or not you want to do it. I'll just show you. So he wants he wants to do a, a tri-hybrid, which would mean this. Just so you know, let's say we have. Uh, actually, we did. Did I do a D or a W first? I can't remember. W. I thought so. So if you were to do a, a tri-hybrid with both parents, let's say white disc shaped, and we'll say tall. Okay, with a little T. Okay, you ready? Okay, so you would have to do it like this. I've done these on a testing kit. They aren't fun. This parent could give this one. There's one. Everybody, everybody, count every time I draw a line. One. Okay, that's one, two, three, right? Okay. Four. Five. Okay. No, I can't do it that way. Sorry, I did it wrong. I haven't done these in so long. What do I have to do? I got to use different colors. I'm going to get confused. I got to go this one and this one, right? And that's right. I forgot. Then he had with this one and this one. There's two. I'm just going to tell you. There actually ends up being. Let's see. There ends up being 16 on each side. Okay. We aren't going to do that. 
Yeah. That's no fun. Okay. We had one of those as an extra credit problem in college on our test, and I knew the answer because it was like it was like asking you what's the phenotypic ratio of a nine to three or a, when both parents are heterozygous and a dihybrid. It's nine to three to three to one. You don't want to do that. Okay. Now we are going to stop the recording so we can get into what we're going to do.